So, we have been discussing steady state analysis of mass transfer and biochemical reaction in immobilized enzyme reactors. The effect of mass transfer is demonstrated in the performance of immobilized enzyme reactor by virtue of the effect of linear feed velocity in the case of plug flow reactors or effect of agitation speed in the case of a stir tank reactor or the effect of particle dimensions or particle size on the performance of enzyme reactor. And these parameters influencing the rate of enzyme reaction or the performance of the immobile enzyme reactor demonstrate the role of mass transfer in the performance of uh, the enzymatic catalysis. Now, we have earlier seen the role of external film diffusion as a result of a thin film that is present on the surface of the catalyst particle in the case of a uh, enzyme reactor. And we have considered the interaction of the film diffusion along with the biochemical reaction in the case of a non-porous particle and a combined external film diffusion coefficient k l along with the biochemical reaction uh, constants was determined. The second case is about the pore diffusion which in fact is much more pronounced in the case of enzyme catalyzed reactions because in the case of uh, porous matrices a very large surface area where the enzyme is present is through the pore surface in the catalyst particle. And so, obviously, the second case is if we consider a porous matrix in which the enzyme is mobilized throughout will provide you the uh, case of a, a pore diffusion resign. Now, in general for an isothermal reaction which usually most of the enzyme catalyzed reactions are the effect of internal pore diffusion can be clubbed or can be expressed in a, a constant what is what we know uh, what we know as a parameter what we know as effectiveness factor the eta is called effectiveness factor now eta essentially here is the ratio of actual reaction rate in the matrix in the presence of pore diffusion resistances. That means, as a result of the concent substrate concentration gradient that develops in the matrix um, in the matrix is, uh, phase to that of maximum reaction rate obtainable in the absence of any pore diffusional resistance. That means, if you consider particles very fine particles in which the pore diffusional resistances may be negligible or there are no substrate concentration gradient across the particle physical boundaries and that means reaction is taking place in the particle at the same rate as in the bulk solution and that ratio is called effectiveness factor practically. Now, of course, uh, physically one can uh, conceive uh, the absence of pore diffusional resistances in the form of very small fine particles to that of the particle which are of larger diameter and where the uh, substrate concentration gradient becomes quite severe. Now, this uh, effectiveness factor essentially has a number of uh, characteristic one is that in most cases the effectiveness factor will be less than or equal to 1 because the uh, presence of pore divisional limitations will always reduce the substrate concentration in the particle surface and therefore, the substrate concentration at which the reaction will take place actually in the particle boundaries will be less than that in the bulk or at the surface and therefore, the uh, effectiveness factor will be less than or equal to 1. Of course, as I mentioned earlier two specific cases demonstrate where the effectiveness factor can be more than one. One is in the case of enzyme reactions which are controlled by substrate inhibition kinetics. That means, at the 
higher substrate concentration the reaction velocity is inhibited and therefore as the substrate concentration gradient developed in the particle the concentration drops and the reaction rate can be higher than at the surface and therefore uh, the effectiveness factor can be more than 1. The second case is of the part due to partitioning effect if suppose the matrix is charged and the substrate is also charged and if the, the, the two if the two species have opposite charges then the concentration of the substrate inside the reactor inside the enzyme particle will be more than that in the bulk and therefore the enzyme reaction rate within the matrix may be more than what is obtained at the uh, the cat matrix surface and therefore the effectiveness factor can be more than 1 in the two cases that we have just elaborated the second characteristic feature of the effectiveness factor is that it is inversely proportional to particle size. I mean if you reduce the particle size the effectiveness factor can approach to unity that means which essentially means that the uh, whole of the uh, matrix of the immobilized enzyme particle is able to get adequate substrate and carry out the biochemical reaction and therefore uh, and in, in almost experimental conditions usually no pore diffusion resistance is obtained that means effectiveness factor is approaching 1 with particles of diameter less than 30 microns and average pore size greater than 2000 angstrom. That means either of the uh, pore diameter is large or the particle size is reduced the effectiveness factor can be made to go towards one, but of course in these cases you face other operational problems like if at the low particle size the there is a I mean risk of uh, high pressure drop across the bed and therefore more power consumption for carrying out the uh, operating the enzyme reactor. Also the uh, effectiveness problem can be more serious when the substrate of low diffusivities are to be processed. Now if you take a substrate which has a lower diffusivity in the matrix. Uh, the uh, problem is more serious because the rate of diffusion is slower than the, the biochemical reaction rate. Therefore, uh, the relative rate of diffusion and relative rate of biochemical reaction are is another feature which controls the effectiveness factor and of course, I think here also I must uh, make it mention that uh, the diffusional coefficient the molecular diffusivity of a particular substrate in an empty matrix and also and in the case of uh, a immobilized enzyme particle where uh, the path of diffusion is quite uh, uh, haphazard it makes uh, a quite a different diffusivity and therefore very often in the case of immobilized enzyme particle we call it effective diffusivity rather than diffusivity. The you see the normally if we take an ordinary particle a spherical particle where the pores are very uniform say for example you, you have a, a sphere where your pores are just identical in the case of a for example control pore glass then the path of diffusion is linear and of the same dimensions whereas in the case of actual particles what we encounter in the case of immobilized enzyme system the path of diffusion is really not linear and uniform throughout the particle and it can happen uh, and that you have uh, pores almost going I mean in a random manner in the whole particle and therefore the uh, diffusivity that we obtain uh, from the theoretical consideration of a spherical particle may be in effect different than what is obtainable of a particle of that dimension assuming a uniform cylindrical pore. We have also uh, uh, mentioned last time that if we want to analyze the simultaneous mass transfer and biochemical reaction in the matrix in a mobile enzyme particle it can be expressed assuming a a cylindrical pore model that means we assume that the, the substrate diffuses into the particle in the form of a 
cylindrical pore. And I must mention that as I mentioned just now uh, that uh, uh, in practice it may not be actually like a cylindrical pore. But to just to simplify a uh, geometric similarity and to analyze it, we are just assuming a uh, cylindrical pore and then instead of taking a diffusivity, molecular diffusivity, we consider a effective diffusivity which takes care of the uh, random nature of the pores. Now, it, uh, the simultaneous mass transfer and biochemical reaction in the matrix can be analyzed in the form of a second order differential equation d e d 2 s over d x square minus b prime equal to 1 where b prime is the apparent rate of reaction that means under apparent kinetic parameters in the case of a mobilized enzyme and d e is the effective diffusivity and uh, the substrate concentration profile here let us say we consider this as a single pore and obviously this pore refers to half the particle depth there will be another pore on this side of the same dimension. So, whatever dimension of the particle we are considering let us say if it is a, a pallet of thickness 2 L we consider L as the thickness because the substrate will be available accessible on both the sides. Similarly, if it is uh, a sphere then the radius is the major uh, I mean dimension which is importance here in terms of x and therefore, uh, one need to consider only half the particle for analyzing or making a, uh, such an analysis uh, for uh, getting a, a analytical solution for the substrate concentration profile. Now, the substrate concentration profile for such a situation for such a uh, uh, second order differential equation is usually obtained in terms of a thiel modulus phi here is defined as a thiel modulus in general which is defined as a lump parameter like this which is l into k true into s surface substrate concentration to the power m minus 1 upon d e and whole square root and this is a general where, where k true is essentially the reaction kinetic constant in the absence of any pore diffusional effects that means in the on the surface or in the bulk. Now, substrate S s is the substrate concentration of the surface and m is the order of reaction whatever is the order of reaction and d is the effective diffusivity. Now, the solution of these uh, differential equations is usually expressed in the form of thiel modulus and of course, a large number of workers have essentially given the solution of this expression both for zero order as well as first order reactions which, which for which the analytical solution can be easily obtained. Now, in the case of michaelis benton kinetics if we put the V dash term in the case of michaelis benton kinetics which is a non-linear expression the analytical solutions are difficult and usually you I mean sort of uh, uh, approach uh, numerical solutions which have been also reported in literature. But very often uh, for practical purposes we try to look at our reaction conditions and assume and consider them that are they closer to zero order or first order depending upon the percentage error that is involved in calculating the uh, space time under the given set of conditions. Given set of conditions as I say are the subst inlet substrate concentration and outlet substrate concentration in the reactor and within that regime uh, that means fractional conversion and initial substrate concentration in that regime if the reaction is more close to zero order we very conveniently consider our system as zero order and uh, make the design calculations or even in case it is more closer the percentage error is less in the case of a first order kinetics we go for a first order design calculations, but alternatively an exact solution using michaelis benton kinetics also can be obtained numerically. Now, the effectiveness factor essentially for all those system is a function of the thiel modulus in all cases whatever is the order of reaction whether it is uh, first order zero order or michaelis benton kinetics the effectiveness factor is always a function of thiel modulus and this varies the thiel modulus the, the, this function varies basically on the order of reaction as well as on the particle geometry that means whether the particle is a sphere or a chip or a cylindrical uh, a fiber cylindrical pallet or whatever is the shape it varies on the on those factors uh, the relationship between the effectiveness factor and uh, the thiel modulus. Now, as I mentioned earlier the thiel modulus is a function of the true rate constant 
the sub substrate concentration of the surface and effective diffusivity. And physically, if you look at, I think the Thiel modulus gives you an indication, although it is not an exact ratio, but it really gives you a ratio between the two reaction rate or reaction rate parameters rather to that of rate of diffusion. The, the, the numerator expresses the a parameter resembling to the rate of reaction and the denominator is the uh, represent the rate of diffusion and the Thiel modulus is essentially a expression of uh, the ratio between the two things. So, therefore, basically if the Thiel modulus is high means the reaction rate is faster. If the Thiel modulus is smaller means the diffusive the rate of diffusion is smaller. And of course, if you just substitute simplify the Thiel modulus expression either for a zero order or a first order reaction it becomes still more simpler for a zero order system it is L k true upon d into S s whole square root that means the Thiel modulus is inversely proportional to the substrate concentration at the surface. On the other hand for the first order uh, reactions the Thiel modulus is independent of substrate concentration because uh, 1 minus 1 is 0 and so it becomes independence of uh, substrate concentration. Now one can uh, uh, there are ample uh, literature available from which one can write for pore diffusion controlled first order reactions in a packed bed reactor assuming spherical particles in the packed bed reactor the effectiveness factor is given as 1 upon phi within parenthesis 1 upon 10 3 phi minus 1 upon 3 phi and uh, and that is the relationship between phi and effectiveness factor and um, using this effectiveness factor then you can write down a, in your reaction rate expression and for first order kinetics one can write the reactor performance equation as epsilon tau is equal to minus k m upon k 2 e naught which is essentially the first order rate constant into l n 1 minus x uh, and the expression for effectiveness factor that is given in the parenthesis. Essentially the expression in the parenthesis is same as if, and you remember we have defined right in the beginning that the reactor performance can be uh, simplified by taking a reaction rate expression which is multiplied by effectiveness factor. And so, therefore, the tau, the space velocity or the space time can be given by the, the same design expression which was used for idealized enzyme reactors, excepting that an effectiveness factor for a case has been multiplied to the system. And of course, for the first order kinetics, this is the effectiveness factor as we discussed earlier. Now, this is in the case of spherical particles. Now, the same expression when you talk about packed bed of chips that means very thin films of very fine thickness let us say uh, of the uh, thickness L. In that case the uh, tau is given as uh, k dash m L n 1 minus x upon k 2 dash e naught and the effectiveness factor essentially here is different uh, as 10 hyperbolic phi upon phi where the particle thickness is very very small. So, these expressions have been obtained experiment oh sorry analytically in the case of uh, different particle size like in the case of thin films and for spheres we have mentioned even for cylindrical pallets, discs they have a number of such expressions are already available in the literature which can be used. Now, based on this uh, I think one of the major uh, probably studies uh, which were reported uh, in 70s was on particularly on the uh, the mass transfer in immobilized enzyme reactor by Robito and Kittrell, they made physical measurements experimentally of the Thiel modulus and also calculated the effectiveness factor uh, based on these uh, I mean expressions and they gave for both spheres as well as thick as well as discs uh, of different thicknesses and uh, confirmed the validity of the uh, first order uh, reaction rate expression applicable in many cases of packed bed reactors. And in here the uh, data points shown are essentially the experimental data with different particle sizes from uh, say for example from 120 microns to 1000 microns 
in fact essentially they used control pore glass and immobilized it with glucose oxidase and measured the reaction perf reactor performance with different particle sizes and made both experiment uh, the, the value of effectiveness factor based on the experimental data that means by taking as a ratio of the actual reaction rate for a particular particle diameter divided by the reaction rate at which particularly with a very small particle size say 30 microns and also calculated the same reactor performance using the analytically developed rate expert or the reactor design up equations and they found almost a very uh, good fit both in the case of spheres as well as in the case of disks and that is what confirmed the pardon effectiveness factor by x is not by x is, is effectiveness factor and thill modulus and as a matter of fact the uh, relationship between pore diffusion limitations and the thill and the and the thill modulus is expressed in terms of effectiveness factor because if you know effectiveness factor you can have your reactor performance equation where where you multiply your reactor rate expression if it is a first order you multiply let us say uh, eta into uh, v k2 e0 upon km the first order equivalent uh, pseudo first order rate constant for an enzyme catalyzed reaction or if it is zero order k2 e0 and you multiply by effectiveness factor if you are aware of that. Another thing which also has been uh, checked experimentally, another factor which influences the reactor performance uh, as a result of pore diffusion, the effect of increasing enzyme loading. Basically what you are doing when you increase enzyme loading, you are changing the effect, uh, thill modulus. The numerator in the thill modulus which gives you the reaction rate constant is increasing because the concentration is high. So, a K2 E0 upon Km if is the first order rate constant in the case of a mobilized enzyme catalyzed reaction then the value of E0 is increasing by enzyme loading and therefore, with enzyme loading as you notice that as you increase the enzyme loading and in this direction and some arbitrary values of let us say 1, 10 and 100 you notice that effectiveness factor very sharply decreases that means the enzyme becomes or the uh, the reactor system enzyme reactor system becomes more and more controlled by diffusional limitations and when the enzyme loading is less the diffusional limitations are less uh, i mean as a matter of fact uh, up to quite a large particle size uh, it can be considered almost as a, a i mean a free of uh, diffusional limitations as I mentioned that uh, you see the increasing enzyme loading influences the increase in phi the thill modulus. The thill modulus on the numerator if you see is uh, your uh, K true that is the true rate constant which is essentially in the case of enzyme reactor is uh, K 2 E 0 upon K m in the case of first order or in the case of 0 order it is K 2 E 0. So, increasing enzyme loading means the loading is uh, the, the, effect, the concentration of enzyme is being increased. E0 is increasing, so phi is increasing, and thill modulus increasing thill modulus gives you a lower effectiveness factor. And obviously, which means uh, that uh, the rate of reaction is much faster than the rate of diffusion, and that is what the ratio is described by thill modulus. And therefore, the effectiveness factor decreases if you, uh, I mean, keep on increasing the loading you will have a very significant effect upon your uh, the final reactor uh, performance and ultimately it may happen that the rate of require the, the loading may have no I mean function the whole reactor performance may be controlled by only rate of diffusion D. Here again another feature which in many cases have been numerical solutions have been found where in the case of uh, Michaelis Menten kinetics which indicates the effect of thiel modulus on effectiveness factor as a function of beta something like a dimensionless Michaelis Menten constant which is a ratio of k dash m upon s naught. Again it shows you it shows the effect of uh, shift from uh, your 0 order to first order the shift is uh, when k dash m is very very small 
the, the when beta is small the k dash m upon s naught is also is small and whereby uh, you see the effect of beta on the effectiveness factor as a function of thiel modulus and in this case also as the thiel modulus or the beta value increases that means uh, the reaction shifts from uh, first order for zero order to first order the beta, beta beta value increasing means from first order to or from zero order to first order and in, in that case the effectiveness factor decreases and the similar or, or the same effect on the thiel modulus is obtained in either direction. So, is essentially in the case of analysis of uh, the uh, internal pore diffusion in the case of a immobilized enzyme reactor basically the analysis amounts to determination of a effectiveness factor for a particular system and that is directly controlled by the value of uh, diffusivity, effective diffusivity, the reaction rate constant uh, and uh, on the size of particles uh, what we are considering. Now, if you consider say for example, a combined film and uh, pore diffusional effects and again for a simplistic case of a first order irreversible, irreversible reaction, enzyme catalyzed reaction, uh, we can club the two things for example, the film external film diffusion and internal pore diffusion along with the biochemical reaction and the flux of the substrate can be then written as for example, J is equal to K L S B minus S S. You will recall that in the external film diffusion our flux of substrate along the particle surface is given by K L which is the external film, diff film diffusion coefficient into the substrate concentration gradient that is developed in the film and that will be put equate to eta into k f into s s that means, this is the factor this is the rate of reaction or the flux uh, th through the pore diffusional limitation. If I, the, the pore diffusional resistance is expressed by eta k f is the first order rate constant or it can you can be also written as k 2 dash e naught upon k dash m and S s is the substrate concentration at the surface of the particle. Now, if you simplify this you can write S b minus S s upon j equal to 1 upon k l that is the inverse of the film diffusion coefficient and also uh, S s upon j is equal to 1 upon eta k f. and therefore, S b upon j is equal to 1 upon k l plus 1 upon eta k f. So, basically if this is S b upon j is the main flux taking into account both external film diffusion as well as internal pore diffusion and the first factor 1 upon k l is resistance provided by external film diffusion. The second expression is a resistance term. Uh, due to pore diffusional limitations then the overall effect is a sum of these two resistances and therefore, uh, one can obtain I mean now this essentially S b upon j will be the uh, flux which will really be expressed in the case of a reactor performance which experiences both film diffusion as well as internal pore diffusion. So, therefore, if you for example, if you carry out a immobilized enzyme reactor a continuous immobilized enzyme reactor and determine the reactor performance and if you assume that uh, that you you just uh, carry out the reactor performance steady state reactor performance at various fluid velocities that is a linear flow velocities what you are doing in essentially you are varying the k l value. We know that the increasing the linear flow velocity will influence the k l value and 1 upon k l will be in 1 upon k l will be increased by the increasing film increasing uh, flow velocity the k l will decrease and the 1 upon k l will increase and so if you plot let us say flow rate inverse versus the overall rate constant 1 upon k dash now which is, this is we are defining this k dash as a reaction rate constant apparent reaction rate constant which takes into account biochemical reaction 
and also the external film diffusion as well as internal pore diffusion and then you get almost a linear velocity with a uh, intercept at 1 upon eta kf where kf essentially is your pseudo first order rate constant. That means, if you carry out your reaction basically to get such a, a performance if you carry out the reaction at a low substrate concentration or even at a high substrate concentration where the degree of conversion fractional conversion is very high where the reactor performance will be a closer to a first order kinetics. You see if you consider the reactor performance in terms of zero order or first order kinetics if you take any substrate concentration at the feed and carry out the substrate conversion to a very high level and you will have the reactor overall reactor performance which is uh, much closer to a first order kinetics. If the, if the conversion level is not very high then the reactor performance will be controlled by zero order kinetics. If the outlet substrate concentration is also very high compared to uh, the inlet substrate concentration the reaction can be considered or at least approximated to be equal to zero order kinetics, but if the conversion is very high whereas, so that the outlet substrate concentration is very low then you can always approximate to be a first order reaction and if you carry out that and carry out the steady state reactor performance at as a function of flow rate and determine the uh, overall reactor reaction rate constant based on the reactor performance data and then you can determine by the intercept 1 upon eta kf, kf is assume and is known to you depending on the uh, kinetic parameters of the immobilized enzyme. So, the value of effectiveness factor can be theoretically calculated and which gives you and also the k dash is essentially the uh, overall reaction rate constant which takes into account the biochemical reaction and the combined film and pore diffusional effects and which can be also used essentially the k dash can be used as a first order rate constant for design of the uh, reaction uh, the, the immobile enzyme continuous reactor. Finally, uh, I would like you to leave with a small exercise that means, if we consider that your the analytical solution of uh, a internal pore diffusion and biochemical reaction can be determined by a second order differential equation and if let us assume that the second we have given some solution for the first order uh, I mean uh, reactions if we assume that the reaction is towards zero order kinetics that means, the initial substrate concentration used is high and fractional conversion is also not very high where let us say if you start uh, uh, the in, in feed inlet concentration say at 100 uh, km value 100 times the km value and the final substrate concentration in the from the affluent is let us say 50 km the whole reactor will operate almost uh, uh, closer to a zero order regime and if that expression can be given by d e d 2 s over d x square minus k 2 dash e naught is equal to 0. And if you consider that uh, we are talking of let us say a disc a thick a, a, a sort of a, a cylindrical disc with a thickness of uh, 2 l Now, we, we would like to I mean we uh, I would like you to develop uh, the uh, solve the equation to get the substrate concentration profile as a function of distance from the center. Let us say if you give this is the distance x either on either side that means, the thickness the distance of the surface from the center is x and on either side and the uh, the substrate concentration profile in such a uh, sort of thick membrane uh, it need to be evaluated based on the second order differential equation. Obviously, the boundary conditions in such a case will be you know x is equal to L, s is equal to S s. Now, you can consider the substrate concentration as S s if you just uh, I mean uh, leave out the external film diffusion and it is S s and on the other hand you add x is equal to 0 that means, at the center of the particle the d s over d x is also equal to 0 under these two boundary conditions if you simplify and get a expression for let us say s upon s s and rearrange that in the form of uh, thil modulus uh, 
that means essentially for a zero order uh, phi zero is equal to L uh, k uh, k two dash E naught upon d e into s s to the power half is not it. Now, Thiel modulus will be this one and so rearrange this expression in the form of phi and get the uh, I mean uh, reactor performance or uh, you can also find it out that at what thickness from x from the center at what value of x let us say x is equal to some critical value of L when uh, the substrate concentration becomes approaches to 0. That means, that fraction of the enzyme will be ineffective and the ratio of that the 2 that is L over L c or other uh, uh, L over L c will give you effectiveness factor. So, I would like you to do this exercise and uh, solve this differential equation under these boundary conditions and arrive at two things. One is the substrate concentration profile within the immobilized enzyme particle and in, in terms of surface substrate concentration and second thing is this length from the center the value of L c at which the substrate concentration tends to be 0. If we assume that then obviously, uh, your uh, uh, the boundary conditions will change the boundary conditions will change is that all right. So, I think we stop at this point.